Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Unite Community Church Online. My name is Cody and I'm so glad you decided to join us today. If this is your very first time with us, I wanna give you a special welcome. Thank you for spending your morning with us. So today is an awesome day because today is our fall launch downriver and we're kicking it off right. We have free Kona ice out there. And we have two service times. So those service times are at 9.15 and 11 a.m. So if you live in the Downriver area, go check that out. And if you're not able to make it this week, go next week. We'd love to see you there. To find more information about that, plus more, please go check out our app. Now we're gonna move into our generosity moment. And today I want to highlight North Rock Church. So they're a local church in the Washington area and they are being so generous to us in our church. So as you know, in Washtenaw, we're looking to get started our in-person services very soon. And with that, there's so many needs, from kids ministry to production to worship. And North Rock Church has donated tens of thousands of dollars of gear to help us get started. So let's just show appreciation to them right now. Comment below and just tell North Rock, thank you for your generosity. And it's generosity like that that inspires us to give. We also have an opportunity to give right now and be generous. We can do that through giving on our website or through our app. Now we're going to go into a time of worship. Let's all worship together. And are you hurting and broken with it? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin. Jesus is calling Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a tree from the well? Jesus is calling No, come to Yeah. 
What's up guys? Welcome to Unite Community Church. My name is Chris Pasek, lead pastor here at UCC. And if you're brand new, maybe you got a mailer in your mail and you're like, I want to check this place out. Or maybe a friend told you. Either way, so, so glad that you're with us if you're brand new. If you've been tracking with us, man, Church Online, look, can't we agree? Thank God for being able to do church where you are. Are. And I know like this might not be the perfect scenario for a lot of people, but I'm just glad to be able to be doing this. And so today we're launching a brand new series called In Sync. All right, this is going to be a five-week series. And here's my goal, all right, for this whole entire series for the next five weeks. My goal is to get you in step, in rhythm, or dare I say in sync with the heart of God. Now that might seem a little lofty, but I really do believe that is where God would want us to be. And so before we dive in, I'm going to pray and then we're going to launch into this series. All right. So if you bow your heads with me, I'd love for you to pray with me. Jesus, God, thank you so much for today. God, thank you that we get to do church where we're at. God, whether it's in a coffee shop or whether it's in our homes, uh, maybe it's, God forbid, a hospital, you know, where we, we just have had a moment where we can call a time out in our lives, open our hearts to the things of you. And so God, I pray today as we dive into, God, some things, values of yes, our church, but more importantly of God, you. God, get us in sync with what you're doing in the world around us and give us the boldness to step into it. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Now I'm not you, but have you ever been in one of those moments where your mind, your body, and you could even say soul, right? But it was all in sync, firing at the same time. It's like you could feel everything around you. Now, I don't, I don't know what kind of person you are, but there's kind of like two types of people, all right? Is there's people that kind of like everything in front of you. You know, it's like I can kind of see it. I can portray what's happening. Um, that's like you can see it and you, you kind of like that. It's kind of like a defensive position, okay? But then there's other people that you like to be immersed in like life happening all around you. Like you can feel it. You can sense it. You can be in the moment. Well, I don't know about you, 
But I'm one of those kinds of guys. Is I like to be able to feel things with my mind, my body, my soul, like just feel them, all right? And something happened the other day where I started to learn a brand new skill. Okay, now maybe you guys have been part of this, maybe you haven't, but this summer we got into boating. Now, um, thank you uh, to uh, all the stimulus package money, um, we went and bought a boat. Now, now, before I get an email, okay, it wasn't an expensive boat, it wasn't this elaborate boat, but it's just a functional boat. Okay, and on the boat, it came with free skis. And so me and my couple of buddies, my wife, we were like, let's go skiing, right? And what's fascinating is like, look, Remember the days when you didn't YouTube anything? You didn't Google how to do it, you just kinda attempted and went, well, welcome to my life, all right? And so that was water skiing, as we were like, water skis, rope, let's go, all right? And so we literally just strapped them on and went, and it was like, I can get you up, and you know? And so it was a lot of trial and error, but bottom line is throughout the summer, we got pretty proficient at it. Um, and then I started to learn that there's a really, really important part of water skiing, all right? Because I began like anyone, okay? It's like, wait back, hold the rope, go, <laughs> fall over, go, fall over, go, kind of, oh, I'm up, I'm up, oh, boom, fall over, right? But then there was the moment where I got up, right? And there was just this moment where I'm like going and, and you kind of get the shakes, okay? Like, again, again, I don't, I don't know what, 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 maybe if you YouTube this, like I said, watch a learning video, might be different for you. But for us, I mean, it was kind of like, oh, 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 whoa. And then there was a moment, I'm not even making this up, where it just dawned on me as I'm like trying to water ski and I'm off balance, I'm rigid, I'm upright. I had this thought, bend my knees. And as I bent my knees and sat my butt down, it centered my gravity, it moved me, and all of a sudden, because my knees were bent, now, I'm not making this up, like I could feel the water. It was like the water and I were one, and all it just clicked in a moment where all of a sudden I was dipping, and I was diving, I was cutting out of the wake, woo, doing a little jump back into the wake. I was like, back, forth, back, forth, and wham, face plant. And have you ever felt like, like if you water ski, you're going fast, you know, and yet like the water goes through your eyelids. I mean, it was like, bam, I'm like, oh, and I'm on the ground. I'm like, oh my gosh, because I'm not a good water skier, okay? I'm not good at water skiing, but here's what I know, okay? There's two types of water skiers, rigid and fluid, and why are we talking about that in church? Because it's the same with God. My water ski story is oftentimes our God story, all right? And the way I see it is that we have two options. All right, and when talking about our relationship with God, is number one, it can be rigid. It can be flat. It can be rules. Dare I say, religion. Or it can be a moment where you actually get in sync, your mind, your body, your heart, your soul, where you can sense God all around you and you can fluently move through life. And for me, listen to me, for me, where I wanna lead you and where I wanna take you for the next few weeks is I want us to just get in sync with God. Like I want us to be able to move and go and for him to be around us and in us. And I know that might sound weird, especially if you're brand new. Because you might be here and whatever you walked in here with, maybe you're here and you're just kind of checking it out. You know, you got, like I said, the mailer sent to your house. Or maybe you just stumbled upon this on Facebook and, you, and you're just going, man, I just, I just want to check out God because you've sent something's missing. Or maybe you're watching and you got some baggage. Like, you, like, like God's your last shot. You know, it's like, God, all right, I got this thing happening. I'm going to give you a shot. And God, I want you to answer my prayer about this thing. Or maybe you're here. And you're like kind of mad at God, absent at God, or maybe, maybe you're giving up on God because the rigidness, the rules, like you're tired. And listen to me, it doesn't matter where you're at, but what I want for you, what I want for us, what I want for myself, what I want for our church is for us to be in sync with God, where it's not just rules and religion, but it is a relationship that we're walking, talking, breathing, where we is fully encompassing our lives. That's what I want. Okay, but for that to happen, I'm telling you, we have to get in sync. We have to get moving with Him. And so, like I said, what we're going to do in this series, five-week series, is we're just going to go through the values of our church. So if you go to our website, unitecommunitychurch.com, 
you can check out all five of our values. And the reason we chose these is I believe that if we live these out, if this is who we are, then I really believe that we're going to have a fluidness, a rhythm to our lives where God's going to be surrounding us, ushering in the relationship with him. Okay. And so week number one, number one, we're going to start with our first value. And our first value is simply this passion. Passion. Now, as defined on our website, how we describe passion is simply this, as we will passionately pursue the power and presence of God in our lives. Watch this. We will pray, worship, preach, and play with passion. Now, if you're brand new tonight or you've been coming around, listen to me. We are a rowdy, passionate bunch. Right? If you're following online, just say, hey, man. Hey, man. He ain't never lied. You know, like, like yes, yes, we are passionate, but here's what I know is that we have to be passionate about the right things. And that's what I want to do for the rest of today is that's going to move us to the things to go, hey, wait, well, if passion is going to lead us, if we're going to be a passionate church, passionate people, what are we passionate about? And to me, if you're taking notes, I want us to be passionate about three things, three things. And the first one is very simple. It's this. It's I want us to be passionate for reaching people. Like, I want us to have a passion, and I mean a belly-burning, fire-in-our-eyes passion for people. Now, here's what's fascinating about this point, all right? Lean in. This is going to shock you, all right? I don't like people that much. No, I know, I know. We were, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're the pastor. You're not supposed to say that, but listen to me. Like, have you ever been lying in a Walmart? Oh, my dang. Like, Walmart by us, they just shut down all, it's all self-checkout. All self-checkout, which means everyone just checks their brain out at the door and becomes so, so, so slow to the punch. Okay, like seriously, seriously, like if I have to stand behind another person looking for a barcode on a cereal box, I'm going to snap. It's on the bottom. It's on the bottom. Sorry. I get, get a little, need some therapy. Okay, but the bottom line is, right, just like you, me, like there are things people do. It's like, man, if you really kind of pull back. People are messy. People are sloppy. Relationships are messy and sloppy. And if we go, I love people. Yes, the ones that are act like you, think like you, and have the same lifestyle as you, right? Right? So if that's true, if I don't really like people that much, what gets me to say, well, I'm going to birth a church. I'm going to have a church that's passionately, passionately running after people. And here's why. It's because of the message I believe. Right, where if you want to know what is the central message, what is it for us? It's what we would say is the gospel. The gospel is simply this, is that we've all sinned. We've all lived lifestyles that we don't really want to put on public display, you know? Like things we've Googled, things we've said to people, how we've dis, di, been dishonest, been disloyal, we've lied, we've cheated, we've stolen, we've, we've done all of these things, right? But here's the message, is that yes, All of us have done those things, but thanks be to God that he had a passion for you and me, that he sent Jesus to die for our sins, to set us free. That's the message. That's the message. And you go, well, how does that flip you about people? And it's because I start to see myself in that message. Well, yeah, Walmart people might drive me nuts, but you know what? I think I do a lot of things to drive other people crazy. Like, if you ask my wife, one of the things that drives her up the wall, up the wall, is how I eat. Okay, now, I'm not a sloppy eater. I'm not a messy eater. I don't know what it is, but she just, like, we'll be having dinner, and she's like, stop, 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 stop it! I'm like, stop what? Chewing. And I'm like, I don't, oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, like if you ever sit with me in church or at a dinner table, like, I got my leg bounce, like, I'll be bouncing my leg, and, like, the whole table will be, and Tracy will be like, stop it! Right? Right? Or, or, or the worst, the worst is I'm like the Sunday driver, drifter. Okay? Like where I'm driving, I'm just drifting. Okay? Like, oh, lane change, drift over. Oh, oh, good drift over. Like, I, I do not pay attention. I'm not a good driver. Look, I do things that drive people crazy. And also, when you can see yourself, but also see that Jesus loved you anyway, listen to me, it drives you to have a passion that, hey, if God can love me, look, he can love anyone. And understand, this is marked. Christians, the church, from the very beginning. And what I want to do is walk us through a story in the book of Acts, chapter 19. Now, the book of Acts, if you're brand new to the Bible, is just simply this, the Acts of the early church. Okay, we shortened it and made it just Acts. Okay, but it's the Acts of the early church. So if you want to know how the church started, 
how it began, well, we read Acts. And in Acts chapter 19, we're going to jump into an amazing story, one of the best stories in all the Bible. In fact, I'll go as far as to say, if you've ever felt like the Bible was boring, this is your story. All right, and we're just going to jump in in Acts 19, verse 1, it says this, Paul traveled through the interior regions until he reached Ephesus on the coast, where he found several believers, okay? Paul was a church planter, missionary, a guy out planting churches, spreading the word about Jesus, okay? And so at this point, he's in Ephesus. When he got to Ephesus, scripture says, verse 8, Paul went to the synagogue and preached boldly for the next three months arguing persuasively about the kingdom of heaven. Now call a timeout, all right? So Paul was church planner. Paul was a missionary. And Paul goes to this city called Ephesus. Now for us to understand this context of this, we have to understand that Ephesus was a mega city, okay? Most historians and archaeologists believe that it had about 250,000 people inside of Ephesus. Okay, so if you think about that, like we have a church downriver, okay, all of downriver, okay, there's about 350,000 people in downriver, all right, Washtenaw County, there's about another 380,000 people in all of Washtenaw County where we're going to put our other church, okay, and so if you think about this, Ephesus was almost the size of these two places where we're putting churches, Okay, so this is a big city, a lot of people, and Paul decides, I'm going to go to the local church, or in this point, the synagogue, and I'm going to preach the good news about Jesus. Okay, what's the good news about Jesus? Well, it's what we already talked about. Hey, you sinned. Hey, you suck. Hey, I suck. Hey, we all suck. But you know what? If we have a suck party and invite Jesus in, we won't suck no more. It'll be great. And what do you imagine? The good old church people did embrace this. You know, I am not a good person. No, keep reading. Verse nine. But some of them became obstinate. They got mad, right? Like they were like, hold on. I don't know what this new sauce is you're preaching, but we don't want none of it. And says this, they refused to believe and publicly maligned the way. So Paul left them, he took the disciples with him, and had discussions daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus, all right? Which is awesome because Paul basically is like, well, I'm not just going to stop teaching about Jesus. So what Paul does is he leaves the synagogue. He says, hey, I'm going to just go down the road, and I'm going to start a new movement, a new church, kind of like UCC. Hello, three years ago when we started at EMU, okay? He rented a lecture hall like we rented Pease Auditorium, and he lights it up. All right, and literally keep reading because as he does this, this went on for two years, two years. He's just rented this place. He's teaching and teaching. It's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. And so watch this. He ever, this went on for two years so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard about the word of the Lord. Now that's awesome because remember, he started in Ephesus. How many people were in Ephesus? About 250,000. But in two years, what does he do? He takes the message of Jesus Christ, the gospel, not just to Ephesus, but to the whole flipping continent of Asia and millions, don't miss this, millions of people hear about the good news of Jesus. And here's the question, how'd they do that? Okay, they didn't have the internet. Okay, they didn't have TikTok with all their followers and Instagram. Like that wasn't invented yet. Why'd they do it? Don't miss this. They had a passion. Don't miss this. A passion for people in this great, great message of God. And understand, for me, what I want for you, what I want for this church, why we've sent tens of thousands of flyers out, why we challenge you to invite your friends and family, it's because this is what we're doing. Is this to me? I believe we have the greatest message in the world named Jesus, the gospel, and I'm telling you, we're doing whatever we can to get it out. In fact, I'll put it this way. We will do anything at UCC, anything short of sin to reach one more, one more to help one more person discover and love who Jesus is. And listen to me, y'all, this is just who I am. This is just who I am. In our church, listen to me, we do some wild things. And it's because I've done wild things my whole life to reach people. I remember when I was a youth pastor, uh, when I was really, really young in the ministry, Man, we were doing a dating series, and I was like, yeah, how are we going to make this relevant? And so you know what we did? Man, we had a guy 
from the college ministry actually go out on fake dates with a blow-up doll. Now, not my shyness moment. Okay, let, we, we put a dress on her and we made it appropriate. But look, I mean, he, he like went on a date. I mean, we filmed it, made videos. I mean, it's kind of, looking back, I'm like, ah, probably wasn't my best moment, you know? You know? I remember I got a little older, uh, middle school pastor. Man, I remember we, we did this big old Halloween party, big, huge Halloween party. And so for me, I became like some pseudo uh, Captain Underpants kind of thing. And so because we had so many kids, we had so many cars, the cops came, we blocked traffic and the cops showed up and was like, who is in charge of this thing? And like, they were like, this guy, and this is what I looked like, ha, right? And I'm telling you, those were the early days and I've grown up some, but listen to me, we are church. Listen to me, we'll do whatever it takes, whatever it takes. I mean, we've rebuilt playgrounds. Man, we've remodeled community centers. Listen to me, we will put our signs out front. We will do whatever it takes with mailers. Listen to me, and downriver, hey, we've just gotten started. You know what we've done there? Just to show people they matter to the heart of God. Listen to me, we've fixed cars. We've paid medical bills. Listen to me, we went to Lafayette Elementary and we just kind of cleaned the whole place up. And the whole question is, is why are we doing that? Because we have a passion, and I mean a passion for people, all people to discover and love who Jesus is. And I'm not stopping until all of our cities, but beyond that, can hear the good news about Jesus. We're going to have a passion, a passion for people. Number one, a passion for people. Number two, is we're going to have a passion for the gospel. Passion for the gospel. And again, what do I specifically mean by that? Well, if you get into what the gospel literally means, if you literally translate it, the gospel just simply means good news. Okay. And why would it mean like that? That's all it means. No other context, just good news. Hey, 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 let me give you a gospel. Okay. That, that's a good news. Good news about what? Why is Jesus such good news? Here's why. Because again, come back to our central message. Man, you and I have sinned. What scripture says, fallen short of the glory of God. But listen to me, Jesus came, Jesus loved us. And even while we sinned, listen to me, he loved us, died for us, paved the way for us. That's who it is. Now hear, hear me. There's two ways you can hear that message. Okay, number one is you can hear that message as a pastor coming down on you and saying, look, you are a horrible person. Or... You can take it at what it really is and the fact that you've missed. Because, yeah, if the gospel literally is translated as good news, what is sin actually translated as? Sin is actually translated as this, missing the mark. Missing the mark. See, here's the thing is that we don't set off to be sinners. We just miss the mark. It's like this, like come into my house. Okay, like me and my wife, we miss. Okay, I miss. And oftentimes, some of our biggest blowout fights are just misses, okay? Where I don't wake up and go, you know what? I wanna just make my wife mad. Wham! Like, that, that isn't me. I miss. And in fact, sometimes I can be doing the right thing and just miss a detail and make the whole thing go down, right? Like, this happens with shaving, okay? Now, again, I'm, I am like not much of a shaver. I am a beard trimmer, okay? And I trim my beard about once a month, maybe once every month and a half. Okay, what I do is I just trimmed it. Look pretty good. <laughs> Looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah. We have a grand opening down river, so I was like, I need to shave, you know? So I trimmed it up, okay? And then I just let it grow, okay? Until it gets like itchy and scratchy and I can't take it no more. I'm like, okay, gotta shave this thing, okay? And then I take the buzzers. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Now, here's the thing is I care about my wife. Where one thing that she hates, I mean hates, is when I just make a mess of the sink and then try to put the water on it and just flush it because then the sink gets clogged. I mean, it, it, it doesn't work, right? And so what do I do? Well, I decide, well, I'm, go I'm gonna take a towel. And so I lay a towel out all nice, pretty, right across the sink. I lean over the sink. I'm making sure that the towel is perfectly placed. Man, I'm shaving, I'm doing it all good. It is perfect, it's all in there. And here's what I do. I then fold the towel up, you know, all inward folds, right? Inward folds so that there is no way, no prayer, no way that any hair can get out. The problem is then I leave it on the counter, to which my wife then walks into the bathroom, sees a folded towel so neat and so clean, and going, oh, I'm getting out of the shower, I need a towel. She then takes it and puts it on her and then rubs it around, and in that moment, she's like, Christopher! 
And, then, and you know, you know, in your name, like your wife has that tone where it's like, oh, 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 uh, you know what you did? You, I didn't, I didn't clean up the towel. I didn't clean. You know what I mean? The mist, the mist. And, and I understand, I understand. I think that's where we become sinners. Okay, where again, our culture and our context, we have this idea of sinners being this like, I'm a horrible, horrible person. And look, in light of God's glory, that might be true. But on this side of eternity, I think we miss. I think we miss, like it's, it's like the person with the relationship, right? Like it seems to be great to move in together. It seems to be great to share bills. It's a cheaper way of life. But then what you miss is the detail that the reason you're not getting married is because you're really waiting for someone better to come along. And then that person does come along, you get dumped. And then what happens? Your life is in the dumps and you're going, God, why? God, why? Where are you? I was in love and now they left. You missed. Maybe, maybe it's addiction. Again, here's what I know. Nobody wakes up and is like, man, I would love to be an alcoholic today. Overeating? Oh my dang. Like, you want to pick on something? Obesity? Heart disease? Like, look, nobody wakes up and is like, this runs in my family. Like, this is going to be a great idea. Like, no, what happens is a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and then all of a sudden it gets you. Listen to me. It's sin. That's what happens. We miss. That's what happens. And don't miss this. The reason sin is so dangerous is because whenever you're doing life outside of the grace of God, just on your own, listen to me, it's just a matter of time before you get beat to a bloody pulp. And that's where we're going to come back into this story. Okay? Because remember, remember, Paul is starting a church. Paul is meeting in a hall. At this point, people are getting saved. People are getting baptized. God's power, miracles are happening. And so what happens is, is some people come along. And they're like, hey, 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 I want to be the, have the good life, but like, I don't want Jesus, right? Like that's, that's very similar to most of us. Like I want, I want to be a good person, but like, I don't, I don't necessarily want Jesus. Okay. Well, that's a dangerous place. We're well, watch this verse 13. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord over those who were demon-possessed. Okay, so now this, this is going to get a little bit weird. Okay, but like I said, this is the not boring part of the Bible. Okay, so what you have, you have some Jews that are out trying to cast evil spirits out of people. Okay, so let's like straight up exorcism, wham, you know what I mean? And so they're like, all right, hey, we got this church that's going, I got Jesus, but you know what? I'm just going to go out by myself and cast demons out of people. Watch this. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, time out. In the name of Jesus, who I know? No. In the name of Jesus, who is my savior? No. In the name of Jesus, who I've discovered and began to love a little bit more every day? No. They're going, in the name of Jesus, who this guy Paul preaches about. So what they're saying is, I don't know Jesus. I'm far from Jesus. Jesus isn't part of my life. But look, I want the power and presence of Jesus. But I don't really want Jesus. He goes, so this. In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Now watch this. This is great. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. Okay, so seven sons and a chief priest were doing this. Then watch this. One day, the evil spirit answered them. Call, could you imagine? If you're like doing an exorcism and you're like, demon, come out in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. And then all of a sudden, the guy stands up and is like, and he just, I mean, a demon answers. And he says this, Jesus I know and Paul I know about, but who are you? And then watch this. Then the man who had an evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. Now time out and play that out in your head. Like, I, like could you imagine getting in a fight? Like, I, like uh, no joke. I've been in some fights before. Like, I have never won to an extent of naked someone naked and bleeding. I've lost some fights before. Like, I've never lost so bad that I've run away naked and bleeding. Look, and these guys are getting the living mess beat out of them. And don't miss this, because whenever, don't miss this, whenever we obsess over anything outside of the grace and power of Jesus, listen to me, it's the tendency of life to beat you to a bloody mess and strip you from all your dignity. 
Now I know that seems like an overstatement. That see, we push back and like, well, that's very exclusive. What if I don't believe in Jesus? Are you just saying my life's going to be horrible? No, but what I mean is that you're going to be so far from the things of God that life isn't fair to anyone. Life has a tendency for this stuff to happen. And listen to me, just look around you. Man, addictions are raging. Are they or are they not? Right? We got parents who are strapping themselves so financially, financing everything so their kids can play sports because they believe if they can just do that then and their kids can just make it, then guess what? Then I will find my purpose, I will find my value, and I'll just finance all of it, max out all my credit cards for my kid to be on this team because he's going to make it. What about the over-sexualization of culture? Oh, wow. Right, we got parents, men and women, that are looking at what sex is on TV and they're going, well, 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 that's not what my marriage is. And you know what? That's what I deserve. That's what I want. And so they're leaving their kids in the dust. Why? Because they're pursuing something that really isn't even all attainable. What about social media? How many of us, man, are obsessed about putting up the perfect selfie, putting up the perfect image, with the perfect family, you know, like all the back to school pictures, right? Like, was that morning really that awesome? Right? Right? Is every day really that awesome? And where does that land you and me? Right? When we are passionately pursuing the perfection that we can never uh, obtain, the success that really isn't really able to be obtained, when we are constantly plotting ways to find the greatest pleasure in this life, where does that land us? In a culture, in a society where antidepressants have never been more prevalent, where divorce rates are soaring through the roofs, where we are making choices and decisions that are shattering families that we can't even live with our own kids anymore, and we're sitting there going, man, man, what do we do with all that? Well, I'm telling you, you come back to the gospel where, if, understand, understand, if you have felt like you've wrecked your life, if you feel like you're far from God, if you feel like you've made, you've made the misses, you know what I mean? You've missed in life. Listen to me, there is hope. There is hope. There is good news for you because all of us, all of us have missed. That's the answer. The reason this spread like wildfire because this message is unique to Christianity. Understand, no other religion is it about God making a way to humanity. It's humanity getting back to God. But you know what God says, Romans 3, 23, that all have sinned. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You know what all means? It means all. You know what the Greek translation of all is? It's all. All have sinned. You, me, we all have missed the mark. Right? But man, thanks be to God, Romans 5, 8, that God demonstrates his love for you and me that while we were still sinners, while we were missing, while we were in the lifestyles, while addictions raising, while our relationships seemed to be shattering, listen to me, while that's happening, Christ still died for us. And the million dollar question is, is why would Jesus do that? Why? Like think about just to internalize this. Why would Jesus ever come to that? Like, think about who you really are in your moments of missing. Think about guilt. Right? Like, like those moments where you feel guilty. You know what I mean? Like where, where you know what you've done and maybe it's under the surface. You know what you've become. You know what you're struggling with. Those moments of missing. Think about shame. Or maybe those misses have become public. Right? Like everyone knows, like, man, you did do this. Here's what happened. You lost the job, repossessed the car, like, like divorced. Like those things have become your identity. And listen to me. Here's the good news for you is whatever you're at, whatever you walked in here with, whatever your, your, your miss is, listen to me, listen to me. Jesus has said, look, thanks be to God who Jesus came died for our sins. That's the good news. And he came so he could be set free. That's the whole point. That's the whole goal. That's the central message. And we're going to have a passion, passion for people. Why? Because all people miss. 
We're going to have a passion for the gospel. Why? Why? Because we believe it's the hope of the world. We believe it's the message everyone needs to hear. We believe the reason it spread like wildfire is because that's the message of hope everyone needs. And then finally, we're going to have a passion for holiness. 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 And this is where all the church people are like, oh, yeah, Chris, let's get them, get them, get them. Well, listen to me. If that's you, listen to me. Shut up. I, seriously. Because we don't get them. Okay? Because if that's true, then look, God's going to get you. you. You know what I mean? Because all of sin, all of sin. Okay? But what I want you to understand, we're going to pursue and have a passion for a holy lifestyle. And how is that going to happen? Because I'm going to give you a bunch of rules now. Oh yeah, Jesus will forgive you. He'll set you free. No, 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 no. Here's what I want is you just get in sync with Jesus. Because here's what I believe that you just get around Jesus. Get around Jesus' people and start moving fluidly. Have his spirit around you. Here's what I know is that it is wild the kind of passion and fire he'll put in your heart for holiness. We'll come back to our story. Remember what just happened. Paul plants this church. Boom, everyone knows passion for people. All of a sudden, there's a passion for the gospel where people outside of it, man, are, they're, they're just getting the mess beat out of them, right? Right? And then come back to this text. Watch how it ends. It says this. When this became known to the Jews and the Greeks, what? That there was a pounding, a public pounding of these guys, right? Like, hey, Jesus isn't just like some fake God, but he's actually active, living God. When this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear and the name of the Lord was held in high honor. Watch this. Many of those who believed... Okay, maybe that's you today where you're leaning in and going, okay, you know what? I have missed. You know what? I do need grace. I do need God's power to forgive me of my life. Now there will be believed. Watch this. Now came and openly confessed what they had done. Why would anyone do that? Because the good news is that good. Because the grace of God is actually that, that much of a healer. Because God himself wants to do life with you, setting you free where you don't have to have the guilt and have the shame anymore. But you know what? You can openly, you know what? You know what? I have missed. And you know what they're all saying? Yeah, I have too. And in this point, watch this. And a number who practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. And when they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drachmas, or basically millions of dollars. And then watch this. In this way, the word of the Lord, don't miss this. The word of who? The Lord. The word of who? The Lord spread widely and grew in power. Grow what? Power. 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 Why power? Because when you and I can understand and grasp, we don't have to be perfect people. When you and I can grasp, we don't have to live for an achievement or for a lifestyle. When you and I can grasp, we don't have to live for a substance or a feeling or anything on this earth. Listen to me, man. It sets you free and you understand that you know what life is just better finding my identity in christ life is better when i'm not chasing this proverbial dream that i never can achieve life is just better when you know what i can let my facebook go i can let my guard down i can be a sinner saved by grace not perfect but then pursuing people pursuing the gospel pursuing holiness Life is just better. And I know we might push back and be like, well, oh, oh, how do you know, Pastor? How do you know? How do I know? Here's why. Because no one has ever missed when they follow Jesus. Or if you think about your misses today, think about the biggies, right? Drunkenness, divorce, shattered relationships, shattered families. Here's what I know, okay? Okay? And that's not even getting into pride and anger and all the things that we'd say are under the surface. Here's what I know is that you didn't follow Jesus there. You followed yourself. You followed your pleasures. You followed your pride. And what did it give you? And that's why the gospel is that good. And that's why we're going to have a passion. I mean, a red hot passion for people, for the gospel, for holiness. Let's pray. Jesus, God, I, I thank you that you provided a way that while we were still sinners, Jesus, you died for us. You loved us. You had a blazing, red, hot, fiery passion for us. And so, God, I pray for anyone 
listening in today, watching God, God, that today might be their day where we can openly confess, just like these guys did there. You know what? I'm sick of getting the mess beat out of me. I'm sick of toting that line. You know what? I'm going to be all in. I'm going to openly confess. And then, God, I pray, just like they did, man, they burned the scrolls. God, that you know what? We turn from our past, turn from the things we've done, and God, we walk towards you, and we, your spirit grows in power in our lives. And so if you're watching and listening to me, if you want to receive Christ, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to pray today. I know it might be weird. You might go, well, I don't know how to pray. Listen to me. All it is is talking in your heart words to God. And all you got to do, Scripture says that if you confess Him as Lord of your life, think about what that means. It means He's the King. He's the umpire. He's going left, right. Like He's going to rule your life. So you confess Him as Lord. Okay? and ask forgiveness. Scripture says that that's when you're saved. That's when you're started new. All is gone. It's confession. It's such a good thing. And maybe that's you this morning. And if that's you, I just want you to pray for me or pray with me right now. And you go, dear Jesus, God, I know that I've missed, missed the mark. I've sinned. God, and I confess that I am a sinner. But God, I'm going to trust that on the cross, Jesus, you died for me. On the cross, you rose back from the dead. And on the cross, you paid for my sin. And Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. And God, now teach me, teach me for you to be the Lord of my life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. If you prayed that prayer, listen to me. Welcome to the family of God. Man, I'm so pumped for you. But listen to me. You also got to take next steps. Take next steps. Where again, if that's you and you're going, I'm beginning a relationship with God. Okay, and here's what I want. Okay, you can download our app, okay, or email us at info at unitecommunitychurch.com. Okay, and I just want you to put in the subject line, or if you're on the app, you just hit the I've, I've decided button. Okay, and I just want you to fill that out. Email us, let us know. Me or another pastor will help you take your next steps. Man, I love you guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. Listen to me. We're just getting started with this series. It's going to be super fun as we get in sync with what God's doing and God's people. I love you guys. We'll see you next week. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. Oh, I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I'll raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me And I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated King is alive. Oh, I'll raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I'll raise a hallelujah and I will watch the darkness flee. I'll raise a hallelujah. I'll raise a hallelujah Fear you lost your hold on
Thank you so much for joining us today. If you live in the Down River area, be sure to go check out our in-person services for our fall launch next week. And those service times are at 9.15 and 11 a.m. See everyone next week.